Welcome to Hardware Asylum. In this episode, we're going to be building a couple of subwoofer enclosures. The first enclosure that we're going to be putting together is a dual woofer config. Now, unlike the previous box where we had the speakers in an isobaric configuration, which was a lot like this, we're going to be doing two woofers in the same box. So it'll be something like this. And for this kind of enclosure to work, we need to take the normal airspace we would use for one driver and then double it. Originally I designed this enclosure to put the woofers at the top of the box or at the narrow end of it so that it was relatively deep and that kind of kept the enclosure low and flat. But I changed my mind and went and redid some of the pieces so that now we're going to have the enclosure as a vertical box. Our, our drivers will be here and here. First off, let's go ahead and get this corner put together. And to do that, we're going to be using my handy dandy jig. This is a two by four that was cut down to make a couple of right angles. One side is longer than the other. That allows us to do this. And then we're going to take a spring clamp, attach it to the corner. That will lock this corner piece to our board. And then once we get our alignment, we're going to go ahead and square up these corners a bit. And we can take our spring clamp, attach it to that side. That will hold the corner in place. And while you can buy these jigs at the store or off of Amazon, really, if you already have a table saw set up, you might as well just kind of cut one of these little pieces, save yourself a few bucks, and when you're done, you can throw it in the fire. This corner is a bit high, so what we're going to do is we're going to push that down. That should get some pretty good base. We're going to go back into voiceover mode for this section. For testing, we're going to be using our mini DSP microphone. It's going to be positioned about nine inches away from the subwoofer box with the two creative speakers on the right and the left. Like before, we're going to be using Room Equalization Wizard, and I wanted to start out by testing the port. So for this, you put the measurement microphone right up against the port, pretty much right almost inside of it, and then you run your speaker test. And as we can see, the peak was around 32 hertz, and I tuned the box to 33, so it turns out that the port tuning and the size are equal. Now, one of the benefits of putting two drivers into a single enclosure is that you do get a fair amount of gain in terms of total amplification. These two lines show the amplification of the subwoofer depending on how you do your tests. The orange line is with the subwoofer level at 80 dB to match the speaker frequency. And the blue line is at 80 dB to match the subwoofer frequency. The difference between the two in the sub bass region is around 7 to 8 decibels. And to get this to work, I needed to turn the gain down on the amplifier itself. Though, of course, if you like to have a little extra bass in your music or games, a dual woofer system might be able to get you that without having to add an extra large amplifier. This next chart was one where I was experimenting with the port. So for this particular design, we have the port at the bottom of the box. And with the port open, we have a red line which shows a pretty flat response curve starting at around 
30 hertz all the way up to 100 hertz. The dip at the end is where the active crossover kicks in and it kind of drops off at that point and meets up with the creative speakers. The green line is that same response, but I closed off the port. And for that, I just kind of crumpled up a bunch of can cozies and then reran the test. As you can see, the low frequencies just kind of fell off the map, and that is because most of them come out of the port itself. But also with the air not being able to move, that turns the box into a sealed enclosure, and the driver responds differently in those sorts of situations. This next chart is an interesting one where I'm pulling the response curve from the isobaric configuration from the very first video in this series, and I'm overlaying it with the response curve from the dual woofer configuration in this particular video. The red line shows the isobaric configuration. We can see a relatively flat response curve from 30 hertz all the way up to 100. However, with the dual woofer configuration, we see that we don't get the same sort of amplification until we get to around 55 hertz. I believe that is due to the size of this particular enclosure, and somebody can correct me in the comments down below. But we have a free air resonance of these particular woofers at 45. And that free air resonance is the resonant frequency if you just have it sitting out on a bench. Well, this box is large enough for a single driver to be operating in a free air environment. And I think we just kind of have some resonant amplification as a result. So the last part of this video will be showing some real world examples of subwoofer on and subwoofer off. The first one will be GL Quake, much like in the first video, I'm gonna be playing through the demo. And I've kind of chopped it up so we have three different examples after that, we'll have some bass tracks playing that will exhibit the 25 hertz range where the speakers really start to move and they're throwing a lot of air out the ports. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section down below. And as always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah.